so today I'm going to introduce to all of you the paper Graph Communal Contrastive Learning. But first, I will give a brief introduction about the background. Uh, as we all know, the graph data today are abundant and in many kinds of many kinds. Uh, for example, this, there are statistical networks, social networks, and even protein networks. And uh, an important property of this graph data is that they are usually unlabeled and uh, they are usually grouped by dense connections. So this kind of group, group structures is also called the communities. This is what we focus on in this project. And the existing method dealing with the unsupervised learning for learning unsupervised equation for learning node representations is a kind of method called the graph contrasted learning or GCLs, GCL for short. So the motivation of this kind of uh, method is to maximize the agreement between two randomly augmented views, just as what we show in the left diagrams. And there are there are three types briefly uh, for the GCLs. The first node level to contrast each node with others. The community level, uh, this is what we explore in this paper. And uh, finally, the graph or global level. Uh, this is the most, this is uh, quite similar to the standard uh, contrast learning because this thing, they, they use the summary vector of the entire graph to contrast each, contrast each other. And the strengths of GCLs uh, is that uh, they are just uh, generalizable and transferable and robust. Hmm. Uh, however, there is still some challenges for the current GCL methods. Uh, the first, first is that uh, they do not fully explore the community, community structures in the graph data. So we assert that the structurally related nodes, or we can say uh, the nodes in the community, they tend to be labeled similarly. So this claim is also supported in our experiment section we will see later. And exist, in ex existing GCL methods, uh, they will, the, the nodes within the same community they might be sampled as negative pairs and are forced to separate it from each other in the representation space. And, to, and so our method proposed to, to consider this kind of community structures by simultaneously maximizing the similarity for nodes with, within the same community while minimizing the similarity for nodes in different communities. And uh, what's more, uh, the existing GCL methods are also designed for the single layer graph, but as we all know, the multiplex graph also are also very common in the real world applications. In this kind of graph, graphs and nodes are connected by different types of relations. And the left diagram is an example. So uh, existing methods usually uh, adapt themselves to the multiplex graph by just applying their algorithms on each layer separately and then add up the results uh, from all layers to form the final results. But uh, you can see uh, this kind of adaptation is not quite natural. So uh, our method also provide a more natural way to adapt to the uh, multiplex graph. We, uh, we regard the layers in multiplex graphs as the augmented graph views and then we, we conduct pairwise contrast on all layers. And finally, we will, uh, we will conduct a, a more robust inference at the end of the, the, at the, end of the training. Uh, then I will introduce the pre preliminaries used in this paper. The first uh, about the contrastive learning. The contrast learning can be separated in roughly into two steps. The first, we will conduct a random augmentations to the raw graph. The, uh, in the random augmentation, we introduce noise into the raw data uh, roughly by two states. First, we remove the edges, uh, remove some edges randomly, and we also mask some attributes. 
And then as a training stage, uh, we try to maximize the agreements between two graph views uh, by, by maximizing the, uh, usually by maximizing the mutual information. However, uh, the mutual information is computationally costly. Um, so in this work, we choose an, uh, its alternative, the info NC, info NCE objective. It is a lower bound of IMI and is more efficient. And a key problem of our work is that we want to detect the community structure. So uh, we revisit the classic modularity metrics. It measures the impact of each age on the local age density. You can see in these ex expressions, it compares the actual local age density to the expected, the expected local age density. So by, by comparing them, and adding up all the compared pairs of nodes up, we can get an overall measurement of the community partitions. And finally, uh, about the similarity measurement, uh, we use cosine similarities and Gaussian RBF similarities respectively in, in this work. Uh, then I will detailedly introduce our proposed method uh, it is called Chiku for short. The, the Chiku model is a composed, is consisting of three components. The first, a separate uh, community detector algorithm called DCA. It detects communities by regulating age densities. And uh, for the training scheme, uh, we propose uh, a reweighted self-supervised contrastive training scheme, or the RESC. And finally, we also provide the a more natural adaptation scheme to the multiplex graph. Okay, first, firstly, for the DSA algorithms, uh, our motivation is that we want to uh, jointly optimize the, the community detector with the contrastive training we want an end-to-end training scheme. And we assert that the communities uh, should be connected densely inside. So there should be more ages inside community rather than, us, uh, rather than across communities. And uh, back to uh, what we just talked about earlier, the, the modularity. It, despite its success, uh, there's also some limitations for it. The first, the, the expected local age density, let's see the red bar, it is easily perturbed, perturbed by the variations of ages. So it is sens too sensitive to the choice of node pairs. So it's not good for robust training. And, so the, mod and the modularity only considers the age densities within communities. So to address these two problems, our solution is that we first, uh, we first replace the sensitive, uh, the expected density with a more robust one. And we will also consider the ages between communities. Uh, and this is how we achieve this. We first uh, propose the intra-community density uh, by replacing the modularity with a more robust local density estimates. Uh, so this, this DK, uh, the new estimates, is computed by um, marrying the actual number of ages to the maximum possible numbers of ages. And uh, to marry the connections uh, across different communities, we also propose the inter-community density. The here, uh, we, we set the the estimated density estimate term as zero because uh, we expect is that there should be no there should be no age age between communities and that's the best circumstances. And finally, the joint joint objective it can be written as follows: since we want more inter ages and less inter ages. Uh, but there is also a problem in the actual computation of the, the DSA algorithms is that the DK 
the new density estimates is also dependent on the community index K. So it's also hard to compute for a par parallelization. Uh, so our solution is that we will replace the, the loss term D intra with its lower bound. So specifically, we replace the DK with the, the maximum value, with the maximum possible value of it. And by replacing this, we can vectorize the, the DC algorithms uh, to form, to, we can, finally, we can get this form. And then at the training stage, uh, our motivation is that the so first the node representations within the community should be uh, similar or the nodes should be very close to their community syndroids. And those in different communities should be dissimilar. Or we can see the nodes should be away from other syndroids. Uh, so by doing so, uh, we first apply the traditional node contrast just as other GCL methods. Uh, by by applying the info NC info NC objective, and we add a, a new term called the community contrast. So this is it by comparing uh, by contrasting the between nodes and the community syndromes in different views to try to make to make uh, the, the nodes within the community more closer and from different away from other communities. And finally, uh, to the, for the adaptation to multi-class graphs, uh, we propose that at training stage, uh, we will regard the layers in the multi-class graph as augmented views. So it's a quite natural, right? And we contrast each pair of the layers and Finally, we will add up all the objectives from all pairs and op optimize them in one stage. And at inference time, we first predict separately for each layer, and we adopt a post fusion strategy uh, in which we choose the predictions with the maximum, maximum confidence. Okay. And in the experiments, uh, we, we use uh, four single layer data graph data set and two multiplex data set. It is listed in this table. And for the evaluation task, we, we adopted the node classification and node clustering. And the compared baselines can be classified into two categories. The first are those designed uh, just for the single layer graph and also uh, those Designed for the multiplex graph, and besides, we also compare our uh, community detector, the DSA algorithms, to other uh, widely used clustering methods. We can see that uh, on node cl classification, our model uh, performs pretty well on um, both single layered graphs. It seems we have here some problem with the speaker and the connection. Uh, this is very unfortunate. Uh, 